Welcome back. Judith Troutman is here today, and she is the chair of the GRF MNC committee. Good to see you, Judith, Good as always. Good. Thank you for having me. Nice to have you here today. So the uh, first thing we're going to talk about is uh, the boardroom, and um, first meeting will be next week, right? Yes, the 6th on Tuesday. Yes. Tomorrow the directors go for training because um, there's so many changes. Um, last February, the Globe put an ad in, and they, it's really funny, they said boardroom facelift. Well, it got more than just a facelift. It did. Completely yes, renovated. Yes, it did. So. Yeah, and, and so uh, pictures, in, in entirely uh, new um, everything down there. I mean, right down to the walls. So I mean, new carpeting, walls, new paint. Carpet, yeah, sound. we're showing. Uh, there's a live mm -hmm. from our uh, cameras down there of the boardroom, but you can see. You can probably see it. You have to look over there, Judith. For oh, there. Oh, but yes, yes quite literally, um, it everything down there is new. Yes, it's just gorgeous. Yeah. Um, that lectern you see also turns around, and on the side that's facing the dais right now, there's a TV camera. Right. So, see where it says Laguna Woods Village, the logo, that we used to have a TV there. Right. So they took that So now out. there's a TV monitor yeah. on the, um, on the, the um, dais, the podium there. And, I mean, really, new, new chairs, new carpeting. Everything. Walls. It, they put new some cameras. New, yeah, new <laughs> we, cameras. We can't forget that. Uh, the only thing we're going to have to work on is there is a LED light abo above each station, and that might be too bright. So they said they're going to be able to turn them down. Whether they're going to be able to turn them down per station, or okay. Now, yeah. when you're talking about, there's like one above, over each of those chairs. There's basically. one over each of those chairs. Ah, got it. Okay. And they're really bright right now if you're in there. And if they're mm -hmm. looking at their monitors, that might be a little mm -hmm. difficult. Or if you're a light sensitive person. That's true. Yeah. There so you go. There, there might be a couple of kinks. We'll know tomorrow after the training. Yeah. And I'm real excited about that. Um, some of the uh, benefits of this um, new stuff was that the t technology will support live streaming of the board meeting videos onto the website. So while d doing the meeting, each, if you see those, um, a monitor at yeah. each station, a resident could email us mm -hmm. about questions they might right. have during the meeting, especially for the sick and homebound that can't yes. get into the meetings. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to be really helpful. Um, and then we're going to be able to tape now, videotape all of just the committee meetings and then put them on the website mm -hmm. to view later. Right. Because there's been a big complaint that, that people can't get to the meetings, but we never tape them. And so now mm -hmm. we're going to be able to do that. And I'm not sure exactly how soon we're going to get that part done. But okay. uh, Brad assures me we're going to have the technology to do that now. And so <clears throat> we went a little bit over time. We were hoping that uh, end of March it will be done. But it's technically done tomorrow. All right. Very so good. I'm really excited about that at $301,000. All right. Now yeah, we're right going to move on to a topic that's been going on for a while now, the pickleball. Courts, right? Let's tell, yes. and tell me about those. Uh, on a project log, it's uh, one of the seven marked highest priority. Mm -hmm. And I won't say too much about it right now. They are working diligently. Do the, the topography of the land, which the way it slopes okay. and, and, and curves, and the fact of just where it is and its virgin land, we have some really hard decisions to make. So we wanted to originally put all 12 courts there. But we also wanted to keep it under $499,000. Well, there's also an issue with an easement, a 30-foot easement from Moulton to where we could start building okay. or making any changes. So um, we've been playing around with, uh, with the plans and the engineer, and we're trying to get at least six courts on there. And whether we lay them this way or that way or a combination of both um, <coughs> has been you know, pretty difficult. So, how we lay them and where we lay them is definitely going to affect the cost. Okay, and, and so I want to I want to mention mm -hmm. that I think I'm right about this. The uh, where they're going to be put is uh, right over here by Clubhouse Seven. Am I right? Parcel three, right? There is a parcel there that is um, it, it borders Moulton on one side. It's like a field. In fact, Correct. a lot of times during the spring, you'll see. Mm -hmm beautiful wildflowers yeah. out there. Virgin ground. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's where it is. And it, the other side of it actually borders the driveway that comes into the uh, employee lot up Correct. here. Correct. That's true. Yeah. 
So it's, it's a it's a beautiful place. piece of property, yeah. and when once we make these improvements, uh, you're going to be able to see it coming down Moulton, and it's it's really going to be a, okay. a aesthetic value to the community. So All right. very good. that's going to be under five hundred thousand dollars, and we're good to go, and they're working very hard on that. Okay, now we're going to show a chart here that you sent me. <laughs> And the chart is from SVA, which are architectural and engineering consultants. And this is for the Performing Arts Center. So I'm going to let you explain this to everyone. Now, this is the, uh, this is the chart here. OK, first, uh, we hired uh, SVA okay. in the beginning of the year. And um, what they had to assess was uh, what we needed to do to bring the building up to code, to make the building safe, to make it more functional, in an enjoyable facility. Right. And we gave them a budget, which is really strange, of $750,000. For their consulting fee? No, or? that's what we wanted to spend. That's what our budget was for okay. Clubhouse 3. As you can see in this chart, uh, in their summary, they, they brought it down to four basic areas. The first one, the pink column, it shows it pink, the, our immediate needs, and these are ADA needs, fire safety, life, right. and uh, just safety needs in general. And so those alone are $514,000, mm -hmm. as you can see. Then the second category is our immediate building needs, our structural needs and building deficiencies, which right. includes the dry rot, uh, termites, roofing, mm -hmm. uh, the HVAC system. And these are all things, unfortunately, that are behind the walls. And so the right. first one and a half million dollars, because that alone is 979,000, you put those first two immediate needs together, that's a, a 1.5 million dollars. And we have to sell the community, these are things that absolutely have to be done, but when you walk in the doors, you're not gonna see any of those improvements. Correct. For 1.5 right. million right. dollars. So then we get into the blue uh, category, the augmentation, and those are the nice to haves. We want new seats in the auditorium, we want to tile the floors, uh, upgrade the walls, and make the building more functional. Mm -hmm. So that's where you can see that category alone is $4,166,000. And I would assume part of that is making this into the type of performing arts center where performers from outside the community really want to come and perform. People want to, uh, although we get a lot of people that go there and a lot of uh, performances there, but that's what it sounds like this is about, just making it into a really Correct. great theater. This company, yeah. SVA, they specialize in theaters. Okay. So right. and that's why yeah. they were chosen. Okay. And Very good. so we have a little over 800 seats in the auditorium right now. Right. They're, the ones in the back are uncomfortable, there's not enough leg room, um, they're outdated, and so we think we can do with less seats put in better seats. Right. But okay. to do that, we have to change the tiering, the way sure, the floors tier. Course. And so that's where all the expense comes in. We want new drapes. Um, then, so that's why it's up, that alone is uh, 4.1 million. And then if you go into the user group, it looks, uh, shows up as purple on mm -hmm. the screen, that's uh, $1.8 million, and that's things like the better than the nice to haves. The user groups like the old pros and okay. the theater guild and the people who use that stage the most would like things like a black box. Sure. You know, yes. and uh, you probably know better than yeah, I. Yeah, black box theater usually holds a hundred people or less quite often, but it's it's exactly as it uh, sounds. It's a small theater that can be used for rehearsals. It can be used for very intimate performances. And it's literally called that because when you go in there, most of them that I've been in are literally painted black as like a blank canvas. And most of the performances within a black box usually have very limited sets and people can almost, they can configure the seats however they want for each performance. That's usually what they are, at least the one in, at um, uh, the McKinney Theater down in Saddleback, they're black boxes like that. So I am assuming that's yeah. what you're referring I'm to. I'm thinking that's what they want. They, okay. they also wanted something where uh, behind the screen they could put up scenery sure. with a light right and I can't I'm not uh, theater oriented so I'm not right. really sure but those that. are things that are you know on our dream list yes uh, so that alone is another 1.8 so their total cost as you can see is seven million four hundred and sixty eight thousand five hundred and fourteen dollars and that's just for the facelift mm -hmm. the first 1.5 million is behind the scenes we can't 
we're not going to see any of that, but it's right. necessary. So now we have to, GRF has to go to the community and try to justify at least uh, the $4.1 million and or part of that. And mm -hmm. That's one reason right. we have to do this in phases. And so the way we're going to do that is we are going to have at least one town hall meeting mm -hmm. where everyone can come and have their input. Then we're going to, uh, we have a list going of the user groups like the old pros and um, sure. the people who use the theater the most. They're supposed to call me. Please do not contact the recreation center. They're getting bogged with calls. Okay. I'm the one keeping the list, myself or anybody else on the Clubhouse 3 or PAC ad hoc committee. And uh, then when the time comes, like I said, be patient, we will meet with those groups individually and take a list of their needs. And they, they will meet also with the engineers okay. and with staff, and we will know exactly what they need for their performances. Okay. And so then we'll have to prioritize what we can afford to right. do. Right, exactly. So. All right, now we're gonna move on to a few other action items and uh, all kinds of things on here. This is, uh, every one of your meetings have these action items and they're usually like curb cut requests we're gonna talk about and concrete replacement. Kind of the nuts and bolts things that are, always have to be looked at, always have to be adjusted and, and fixed and updated, am I right? Yes, and third came to us with a request. Mm -hmm. um, they wanna spend $64,000 on just 10 curb cuts in the community. And of course curb cuts are the cut out on the sidewalk yeah. so that a wheelchair can go up. Well, they wanted GRF to pay for half of that. And the problem is, as you can see with our other budgeted items, we feel that the curb cuts we have now are ADA required. These ones are a request of the residents for convenience and they are not ADA required. So we did choose not to participate in this uh, curb cut program of they wanted $32,000 just from the GRF board. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately at this time, we can't fit that into our budget with all the emergency right. needs we have. So we did turn that one down. Uh, but then for 180,000 a year, uh, 150 to 180, uh, the staff is uh, starting a concrete replacement program because a lot of our concrete and sidewalks are unsafe because they're cracked and, and raised at some point or another and, and people are mm -hmm. getting hurt when they're walking. So we did approve that. Um, I just wanna make a couple of quick announcements for safety. Uh, we've had a lot of issues with people hosing down their patios, contractors hosing down um, their constructs, uh, construction materials like after they cut drywall or flooring and all those toxic things, uh, they're hosing them down into the streets and into the storm drains. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, civil code 4.14 and it's punishable by $1,000 per incident or six months in jail or both. Wow. And so we were trying to educate the community to stop doing that, either mm -hmm. themselves, whether they're washing their car with soaps and toxins or if they're allowing their contractors to violate this uh, civil code. Because if the contractor violates the code, it's the resident or the owner that has to pay the fine. Okay, and so, that's right, that's right. So it's real important. Also, um, the Disaster Preparedness Task Force, we're looking for good neighbor yes. building captains, not to be confused with like the Garden Villa building captains. Right. This is totally different. Yes. Um, we are gonna be putting announcements uh, on the uh, TV6 bulletin board, mm -hmm. in the newspaper, in um, the Globe, and uh, other uh, website uh, venues. And so we're gonna have a barbecue for anyone who is in training now to be a building captain or a good neighbor building captain. And uh, there's gonna be some perks. So okay. we really Very are nice. encouraging people to sign up, either call myself, call Joan Brown, or just, uh, call the office and say you want to be signed up for one of those classes. It's only an hour and a half. It isn't anything complicated. If we have a disaster, an earthquake, the only job you really have is to go to people in your building, whether it's four or six other mm -hmm. units, and then report back to the disaster center and say, you know, everybody's fine in my building. Okay. Then they can check off that building. They don't have to send an ambulance to that building. Um, or if you need, someone has an immediate need, say yes, we need an ambulance at this building. And so it's really a pretty easy job and okay. uh, helps you get close to your neighbors and we're not asking a whole lot 
All right, very good. So we'll make announcements on that. And uh, when is your next meeting, Damon C? Because it's every two months, yeah, am I right? Uh, July 20th. July 20th, thank you. All so, right. And it'll be in the boardroom. So yes, and it will. hopefully it'll be videotaped and available then online. Okay, thank you so. very much. We appreciate it. Always good to see you. Yeah, I know. It's All fine. right, it's, I'm glad to have you on. And she always brings great information. Good to see you. We'll Thanks. be right back.